How you doing today, folks? My name is Darnell Dixon, reporting with SEN, that's Sports Entertainment Network. We're here at Eleanor Roosevelt with former free safety from, Marshall, from the Marshall Thundering Herd, Okuchuku Okoroha. Did I get it right? Yeah, you got it right. I just wanted to make sure I got it right for everybody at home. Uh, a great player, and uh, we're going to get right into the interview today. Um, so, thinking about when you were younger, uh, I read up on you, I uh, talked to a couple other people, they said that you didn't start playing football until the eighth grade. Right. Some people, some coaches consider that a late bloomer. Why football? Why not basketball? Why not soccer? Uh, mainly because um, my brother, he played football. Mm -hmm. He was, a, he was a, a, a couple years older than me. Mm -hmm. and he played at Parkdale High School and he got injured. And I used to always watch him play. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd just pick up from where he left off. He got injured. and So I just thought I'd take over. I'd take over. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're at Eleanor Roosevelt right now, number 21, old jersey number. How does it feel to be here right now? It's crazy, man. Like, I, I haven't been in here since, like, four years. And mm -hmm. it's been a while since I've been in here. And it's, it's, a, it's amazing, like, to see how to change, man. Like, everything's just different now, mm -hmm. you know, since uh, Coach Rick left. So, it's, everything's just different, but it still looks the same. You can see a lot of memories. That's, a, lot of, a lot of people was made here. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people's careers started here. Okay. Talk about career. Possibly the NFL for you in the next couple months, okay? The draft is uh, about the end of April. When did it occur to you that you had the potential to play in the NFL? I mean, was it earlier in, the, in, in high school when you got accepted to go to Boston College, or was it actually at Boston College? I mean, it was a lot of different times when it kind of like crossed my mind, especially just coming, being here at Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I used to look up to a guy named Derek Williams. He's number one player in the Good Mason. player. Yeah, he went to Penn Great State. Player, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, just being, just kind of like following his footsteps, seeing how he did it, and um, just watching his career go uh, past at Penn State and just made made a lot of plays there. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and I just thought like, I used to always tell my coach, Coach Rick, when I was here, like, I just wanted to be just like Derek. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to be the closest thing to him. Five-star athlete, mm -hmm. I wanted to be just like him. You know, you can't go wrong. So I tried to do everything that I could, try to follow his footsteps, and you know, I got close, you know, four stars. And I couldn't give him five. Right, right. You know, he had all the offers in the world, and I, I feel like I had enough of 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, everything, just, and I, that's when I kind of realized him, that it wasn't as hard as it was seemed. So just keep on working and just... Just stay focused, and that's what I did. That's great. That's great. Okay. So you realize you had the potential. Now it's almost that time. April's coming up. The draft is coming. Yeah. How does it feel to know that all the hard work that you put in, the potential is all coming to, to full surface? I mean, it, it may happen that you yeah. may get drafted. You may get a free agent pickup. It's all happening. How does it feel to know that? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a great feeling. Um, uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, really. That's, a, that's the one word I can use to explain it. It's a blessing. You know, God, I, I remember when everything happened, uh, when I was knocked down in BC, I just, I just made a kind of, I, I made a promise to myself to just give myself, like, you know, just to let God just take control of everything. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I just tried to do ever since. Just, it's amazing to know it's here, but I feel like it's still not enough. You know, it's always like, you know, I'm not too, I'm not comfortable. I'm not, I can't just come out and say I'm happy, very happy right now because, and everything is still, I feel like it's not over yet. I and mean, this is still like a long road to go, so. Mm -hmm. and, and, and great, it's great that you touched on the BC incident uh, because that's where we're going next. Uh, the NFL future was not always so bright. Uh, there was an incident, 08, 09, where, you know, that was minor. And then you had another incident where you were released from the university. Explain to me what you learned from that incident. I mean, how did that change your life as far as being serious about football? And I just, it showed me that not everything was really promised, you know, mm -hmm. just as a freshman and sophomore at BC, you know, I was just having fun in college, you know, enjoying the college experience, and uh, not only just the college experience, I'm an athlete there, so, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things kind of just came to us, and like just being, like having it all taken away my retro junior year, you know, my senior year, it was, it was, it was crazy, like, you know, it was just, I watched my whole life just hit rock bottom almost. Mm -hmm. It's everything that I work towards and just watching everybody playing and just not being able to do anything. And I think that, that, that kind of just hurt me. It hurt, it hurt more than anything I ever like, had to experience. You know? mm -hmm. I feel like I grew a lot from it, you know, just having that opportunity to go to Marshall. You know, and then I, I feel like it was just so much. I matured so much that year mm -hmm. um, and I grew so much that it's just, 
it, it, it was a blessing really just happening, man. Wow. Just, just let, let God just take control of it. It's good to think that you, you took a negative and turned it into a positive. That's really good. When you say that it's a blessing, how much of a blessing do you think that it, that it was for your, your former teammate, Dominic Legrand, to, to actually travel with you to Marshall? I mean, it was, we was in the same exact position, same exact situation, and I mean, that's all, that's, that was the model we kind of went by, like, just, man, we out of, like, it's not, a, it's not in our control anymore. Mm -hmm. like, when, when we got dismissed, um, and it was, a, it got to a point where we was just kind of searching for schools, trying to talk to different schools and stuff, and it, a, lot of, a lot of the things that we could do, we did, we did what we can do, mm -hmm. and the rest was just on, on God, really, and the rest was, like, the schools was going to like us, and we, we couldn't control any of that, mm -hmm. so it was just, and the only person that had control of it was the man upstairs, and it was, it was a, like, that was our motto, just letting God handle it all, and we just basically tried to lift each other, and it was, a, when Marshall called us and, you know, told us that they wanted both of us, I mean, I felt like a little, I felt like a lot of weight lifted off our shoulders, and wow. you know, it was a, and it was amazing to be able to go over there and play my final year with my best friend. And it was just it was my final year of college football, and like, and it was, a, it was really a blessing. Okay. okay. So you just had your pro day, uh, March 13th. You were real productive. Uh, we already went through it. You know, you jump pretty high, you run pretty fast. What areas of your game do you still feel you need work on? I feel like I can get better in a lot of stuff, like my technique. Uh, mm -hmm. Just continue to just work on my pedal, my break, my, uh, my hips, opening up. Just everything, just going away from the ball. Mm -hmm. I feel like I always get better at that. Coming to the ball as far as like tackling and everything. I feel like that's that's something that just comes natural because I'm an aggressive type of player. So I can always get better just going going away from the ball. You 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 recovered from a year. I mean, right. I, like I said, I've seen some of the highlights, and, and I mean, for a guy that missed football for a full year, you're coming back playing at Marshall Conference USA, you look pretty good for missing a year. Okay, Thank you. what do you like to do more? Do you like to play in space more, or do you like to play in the box? It's just the DB in me, I love playing in space. Okay. You know, just, the, just, you know, the DB in me love playing in, in space more, but I feel like I, I have a lot of, I, my, a lot of my plays are made in the box, a lot <laughs> of my plays are made in there, you know, but... I'm, the DB and me and like just having that, just have, just just loving the cover, loving just the ball in my hands and stuff. So mm -hmm. I love playing the space. I love to shut the receiver down. Okay. That's, kind of, that's my kind of my type of play. And and I seen that on film. I seen the cover speed. I seen the closing speed. I seen the hard hits. Thank you. I didn't see a lot of interceptions. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you doing anything now to try to work on the takeaways and the turnovers? Because you know that's what the league is about. It's not about just defending the pass. It's about taking the ball away from the offense. Yeah. No. I, uh. I'm, I'm definitely working on my hands. Working mm -hmm. on my hands definitely because you know I dropped a, I dropped a, you know I don't call two picks last mm -hmm. season. You know that came to me, but also I had a broken hand. I played with a broken hand all the season. Tough. So um, and with a cast on my hand. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but that's not an excuse. I don't like to try to blame it on anything. Um, but I feel like you know I, that's something I'm working on is my hands. Uh, I know I got, I need these interceptions, man. Yeah. You know, the league's all about turnovers. Yes, but, sir. Okay, I know how to get the ball out of there, you know, I get a lot of forced fumbles you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm trying to make it up in that end, but I'm also trying to get the picks. What player do you most resemble in the NFL? Ah. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be now. It could be the Sean, history. Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor. That's the reason I, that's the reason I wore 21 when I, um, when I was actually at Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. I looked up to him. My whole room is actually full of Sean Taylor pictures, you know, and... Uh, just growing up, that's all I wanted to be like. And I used to watch him all through college, watch him get drafted to the Redskins home team. And I just and I just always just loved Sean Taylor. I, everything I did was Sean Taylor like. So that's a great player, man, I tell you. I, if you wasn't a U fan back in the day, I don't know why you watch college football. Every <laughs> Sean Taylor, Frank Gore, Willis McGahee, I mean yeah. the whole the whole crew, the, the, the right. my, uh, University of Miami. Alright, cool. Uh again, we asked this off camera. Dream destination. Dream destination. And why? Um, dream destination. I always like. I always usually say anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because I'm just meant saying again. Just playing in the NFL is a blessing. It's always mm -hmm. been a dream of mine. That's a destination mm -hmm. that I've dreamed about. Playing, mm -hmm. being in the NFL. And uh, but if I had to choose. I always thought of something about the Baltimore Ravens, you know. Uh, the Ravens. And yes. Just uh, only because it's close to home, but not really too close to home. Mm -hmm. I thought it's still kind of getting away, and um, just have that home home support 
just to have that home, like it's my hometown support and stuff. Mm -hmm. So just having that type of support on my back and just also just they had a great program. And also the biggest reason I really wanted to play there was Ed Reed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to learn from a guy like that. I've always been a guy because that's my biggest, like that's my biggest strength on the field is my knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Ed Reed is a very very knowledgeable player. Yes. And I just love, him. I would love to learn from him. And just, I, you know, like the way he read offenses, the way he watch film, it's all types of stuff that I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I take pride in is watching film and like reading the offense just as well. Wow, that's a good answer. Okay, uh, two more questions. All right, no problem. You've been following the NFL. You've seen all the rule changes with uh, the, the, I guess, the target on yeah. where you should hit as a defender. Yeah. How do you think that's going to affect your game? Mm, uh, it's affected it a lot. And I've got, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to try to, you know, to stay aggressive, to stay so aggressive. You know, a lot of times when I see the ball coming down the sideline, I'm the type of guy that's trying to like eliminate it. Mm -hmm. But and then, but it's when it, uh, I I've got flagged for something like that during the year, you know. But it's it's something that I still am trying to get adjusted to. You know, mm -hmm. it affect the way I play a little bit, but it shouldn't like it shouldn't affect me too much. You know, at the end of the day, it's football. So you know, when a coach can't get mad too too mad when you hit a guy so hard, so, right? You know, it's just at the end of the day, it's still football. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, we're gonna close up and basically. We're at Eleanor Roosevelt. This is where it all started. You have your jersey here. Right. You've been through it. I mean, you, you started at the bottom, came to the top, went back to the bottom, got back to where you know you now you're comfortable trying to get back to the top. Right. What kind of advice do you have for the kids now? It may not just be football player. It may just be somebody that has a dream and they want to continue that journey to get to that dream. They have, you know, downfalls. Everybody does. But what, what advice would you give to a student um, to follow your dream? Uh, I think basically I'll just say just never give up, man. Just never give up. A lot of things are gonna happen. A lot of adversity is gonna happen. Things are gonna happen. You know, it's just it's, it's part of life. You know, in life you get knocked down a lot. So you just always gotta get up and just never give up. Just keep chasing. And really, I feel like if you got if you put your mind to something, you are gonna always find a way to get it. And that's really how I look at life. You know, just when something, when you want something, just always find a way. If it's not the right way, just find a certain way. You're going to find a way to get what you need. So that's why I kind of look at football. Just never give up. Well, listen, I want to go ahead. I want to thank O for coming with us. My name is Darnell Dixon. This is SEN. It's been a pleasure. Uh, hopefully, you've gained a lot of information on O here. Um, and... Everybody at home, DMV area, wish him luck and, and hope that he puts the DMV area back on the map the way it should.